Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today I'm going to be reacting to strange things. Strange thing happens when you cry alone in front of Allah. A big shout out to the person that suggested this and a big shout out to everyone that has that has subscribed to the channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching, thank you for always suggesting stuff. You guys are the best. And if you haven't sub subscribed, feel free to subscribe. And yeah, so uh, this video is quite long, so I think I'm going to break it down into two parts. So yeah, enjoy the video. So without wasting time, let's get into it. The sun as it stands is approximately 93 million miles away from planet Earth. Yet the heat waves that we experience at times or the heat of the summer months in general can at times be quite unbearable. Rather on some places on Earth the heat can become so intense that such areas of the world can become almost uninhabitable. This is with regards to the heat of the sun as we know it today. As for the heat of the sun on the day of judgment, the matter will be altogether different. Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Al-Miqdad that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he says the sun on the day of judgment will be brought so close to people on the day of standing so much so that the distance between it and the heads of man will be one mile not 93 million miles one mile he said he said therefore people will be submerged in their sweat according to the levels of their deeds today he says he says, therefore, some people on the Day of Judgment, their sweat will reach up to their ankles, other people up to their knees, other people up to their waists, and other people, it will be up to their throats, completely submerging them in sweat. And the Messenger ﷺ, when saying this, he pointed to his mouth. Amidst these horrific and harrowing happenings on the Day of Judgment that will be unfolding one after the other, Amidst the unfathomable heat, horrible scenes that you see around you, stress that has never been experienced like this day before, children who are going gray, women who are dropping their loads, and people who are ignoring their mothers and fathers and friends, amidst all of this unimaginable stress, there will be a select group of Muslims who will be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to step aside because he is about to shade them with his shade. Surely this is the station of the prophets and messengers, I hear you say. Yes, this is the status of the prophets and messengers, but it is not exclusive to them. And for those who are interested, they can begin reserving for themselves places today in that shade, starting from today. Who are these people who will be shaded? In the shade of Allah on a day when there will be no shade but His. This will be the template for the khutbah today. In the famous hadith, which Imam al-Bukhari al-Muslim narrate on the authority of Abi Hurairah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Memorize these seven. Sab'atun yudhilluhumullahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluh. 
there will be seven categories of people on the day of judgment who will be shaded by the shade of Allah on a day where there will be no shade but His. Ya Allah. Who are they? He says, Al-Imam Al-Adil. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ بِعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ وَرَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّا فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَا عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَا عَلَيْهِ وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمُ شِمَالُهُ مَا تُنْفِقُ يَمِينُهُ وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَثَابَطْ عِنَاهِ The first of the seven who will be shaded is an imam, a leader who is just. Number two, a young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Number three, he says a person whose heart is hung to the masajid. Number four, two people who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, a man who was invited by a woman. She was seducing him to do haram, but he walked away from the haram saying, I fear Allah. Number six, a man who gives a charity with so much privacy and sincerity that his left hand has no idea what his right is giving. And number seven, a person who remembers Allah Almighty when he is alone and his eyes begin spilling with tears. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that we have been blessed with such a hadith. Alhamdulillah that this position on the day of standing is not exclusive to the martyrs, not exclusive to the prophets and messengers. Alhamdulillah. Yes, there will be a shade, a real shade on the day of judgment. You may ask, but where from? There are no mountains on the day of judgment. There are no objects, there are no cliffs, there are no walls or trees. No, this is a real shade, but where does it come from? Sa'id ibn Mansur narrates in his sunan on the authority of the companion Salman that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adds and says, يُضِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّ عَرْشِهِ Allah will shade them using the shade of his throne. Alhamdulillah that such an opportunity exists. And that is why Imam ibn Abd al-Barr, he would say in his tamheed, speaking about this hadith that you just heard, he would say, وَهَذَا أَحْسَنُ حَدِيثٍ يُرْوَى فِي فَضَائِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَأَعَمُّهَا وَأَصَحُّهَا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَحَسْبُكَ بِهِ فَضْلًا لِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ مُحِيطٌ بِأَنَّ مَنْ كَانَ فِي ظِلِّ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَمْ يَنَلْهُ حَوْلَ الْمَوْقِفِ He says this hadith that you just heard is the greatest hadith that we have with regards to the virtuous acts of worship and the most general and the most authentic in شَاءَ اللَّهِ He says and its virtue should be enough for you because it is well known, he says, because it is well known that whoever is in the shade of Allah on the day of judgment means that he will be spared from every harm on that day. A hadith of such greatness, such magnitude deserves time, deserves attention, and our mashayikh and ulama have given it much attention. Imam ibn Taymiyyah has a huge article on this hadith. Imam al-Sakhawi has a book on this hadith. Imam ibn Hajar al-Asqalani has a book on this hadith. And many others from our contemporaries, they have dedicated volumes just speaking about these seven and others who will be shaded. So let us give it some of our attention as well. Category number one, Al-Imam al-Adil, the just Imam. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'al. Does that mean that we have missed out on number one because we are not presidents? We are not MPs, we are not parliamentarians or governors, we, have not, we don't have this type of authority. A just Imam, a just leader, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says otherwise. It is open. He says in his Fathul Bari, وَيَلْحَقُ بِهِ كُلُّ مَنْ وَلِيَ شَيْئًا مِنْ أُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَعَدَلَ فِيهِ This hadith includes every Muslim who assumes any type of authority but acts with justice within it. So it is not confined to the presidents and the leaders, but the horizons of hope, alhamdulillah, have, have been opened up for the teachers, for the leaders of their households, for the murabun, the mashayikh, the committee members of the masajid, the head teachers, the employers, 
Those who are just, who are fair with the authority that Allah has given them. Such people never accepted bribes. Such people never took sides based upon a person's caste or a person's gender, male or female. Such a person would not make it clear to his children that I love one more than the other. Such a person would never ever deprive his daughter or his sister from her God-given right of inheritance. And this is a rampant musibah reaping through our communities. No, they were people of justice in the authority that Allah had given them. And not only that, they will be enjoying pulpits of light as well. Pulpits of what? Of light, Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْمُقْصِتِينَ عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِن نُورٍ الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ وَمَا وُلُوا The people of justice will be set on pulpits of light on the day of judgment. They are those people who are fair and just in their rulings and amidst their families and all of the authority Allah had given them. Category number one, the just person, the Muslim who is just in his authority. Category number two, a young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. The emphasis here was not on a child, nor a senile old man, and there is good in both. But a youth, a shab, a person of adolescence who grows up on the worship of Allah. Why was he, why was she singled out? Because it is well known that this is an age when the urge, the pull to do haram is at an all-time high. The forces and the accessibility to sin, they are, they are widespread. But if this young man, this young woman, despite the strong pull towards haram and the urges they have within them, they are able to keep themselves within the limits of Islam, it means that this is a person who had taken his or her taqwa of Allah to another level. A young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Sa'id ibn Mansur narrates in his Sunan an additional narration. He says, Shabun afna nashatahu wa shababahu fi ibadatillah. A young man who used up all of his youth and energy in the worship of Allah. Every time he had, every bit of money Allah had given him. The intelligence Allah had blessed her with, the time Allah had given him was all used in the worship of Allah ever since this person was young till the day they were wedged six feet under in their grave. Don't get me wrong, this is not a person who was infallible. This person committed sins, this person mis made mistakes. But what made this young man, this young woman different is that the moment they would commit a mistake, Instantly, they would fall broken-heartedly at the doorstep of repentance, crying in remorse and promising Allah to never return to it again. Such a young man, such a young woman had suppressed the heat of haram. He had moved away from the heat of prohibitions. Thus Allah displays his gratitude and thanks by shading them from the heat of the day of judgment, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. A young man, a young woman who grows up in the worship of Allah, and this is their brothers and sisters. A message to the parents as well, to provide for their children an Islamic upbringing so that they are able to reserve for themselves a place within the shade of Allah, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, to urge them to pray in the masjid in congregation, to urge them to take the best of friends as companions, to urge them to visit the house of Allah and attend the circles of knowledge to urge them and to encourage them for her to wear the Islamic dress code from a young age. It's mind-boggling how we are so keen to shade our children from every type of heat in the life of this world. Yet we don't show the same amount of enthusiasm. I'm just curious, like is there going to be an order in which we're going to be judged, first leaders, then others? or it's going to be sinners and non-sinners, or, or it's just going to be a random selection of how we're going to be judged. Because I'm wondering, if it has to be leaders, do we have to wait for all the leaders in the world to be um, uh, judged first and the rest follow? 
or maybe there won't be any titles when that day actually comes there won't be titles there won't be selection of you go first you go last what do you guys think and then to be shielded by god i guess is a good thing but then what can what can we do to make sure that we've reserved a place um by god's hand to be shielded from all these things we may have done because i don't think anyone is perfect in the world and i don't think we can live sin free and i don't think we can be just in everything that we do because we we'll always do something on something